Good morning, welcome to a new lecture on random processes and in this lecture we will be discussing a very important concept and that is about Gaussian processes. Okay, so let us get started. So, at the onset of the lecture I would like to point out that the random variables and the random processes that we will consider will always be with 0 mean. Okay. So, this is what we will assume. Why do we want to assume this? As I have already stated several times, we want to assume random variables with 0 mean because physical noise processes are with 0 mean and secondly it makes my uh, equations simplified. Okay. So, these are the two important reasons why we want to assume that. Okay. Okay, so, let us get started and uh, let us start talking about Gaussian processes by first discussing what is this jointly Gaussian random variables. Okay. So, we have to first understand jointly Gaussian random variables and once we have understood these jointly Gaussian random variables, we will be able to talk about these Gaussian processes. So, this is the outline of this lecture. We will talk about jointly Gaussian random variables and then we will start thinking about Gaussian processes. Okay. Okay. So, what we have is let us assume that I have m normal iid random variables. Okay. So, w 1, w 2 and w m are m normal iid random variables. Okay. Then what I do is I make a linear combination of these random variables Once I make a linear combination of these random variables, I will end up with another random variable. I call this random variable as z1. Okay. Now, what is this z1? Because z1 is a linear combination of m normal iid random variables, z1 will be a Gaussian random variable. So, we have already seen uh, previously, if you have a linear combinations of normal statistically independent random variables, what you end up with is a Gaussian random variable, right? So, this we have seen before. So, z1 is a Gaussian random variable. What I do is I obtain a second random variable, which is obtained again by the linear combination of these m normal iid random variables, but now I have a different linear combination. Okay. So, let me have okay. So, z 2 is again a Gaussian random variable by the same logic as z 1 is a Gaussian random variable. So, z 2 is also a Gaussian random variable. Similarly, I can extend this concept further and I can have let us say n random variables which are obtained So, I have now n random variables 
and these n random variables are obtained by different linear combinations of common underlying set of normal iid random variables okay so uh, they are obtained by different linear combinations of w1 w2 and wm okay these random variables which are obtained by different linear combinations of common underlying set of normal iid random variables are in fact jointly gaussian random variables okay so what are jointly gaussian random variables jointly gaussian random variables are the random variables which are obtained by different linear combinations of common underlying set of normal iid random variables okay so this is what is jointly gaussian random variable okay so why these jointly gaussian random variables are so useful because they depict a physical noise process so what is a noise noise is nothing but it is a collection of many independent random disturbances and this is exactly what is happening here so if you see that these components denote random disturbances right these are also independent components and we have also seen in the central limit theorem if you add a bunch of uh, many independent random disturbances we get a gaussian random variable of course the sponge uh, size has to go up to infinity okay so this is exactly what is happening here we are having uh, various independent components the sum of these independent components is giving us a gaussian random variable okay so these jointly gaussian random variables thus model physical noise processes and why this w1 w2 and wm are assumed to be normal iid this is just to keep our model simple and tractable okay and that's why they are of interest now let me write this equation or these set of equations in a simpler way let me write it like this okay so what is z z is a vector a column vector which consists of random variables z1 z2 and zn and as we have seen these z1 z2 and zn are jointly gaussian random variables and a is a matrix A is this matrix, and if I multiply this matrix A with uh, random vector W, whose elements are normal IID random variables, then I can obtain this random vector Z. Okay, so what I am doing is I am just expressing these set of linear equations compactly in this way. Now, something interesting, this random vector z has its elements which are jointly Gaussian random variables and such a vector is known as Gaussian random vector. What is a Gaussian random vector? A Gaussian random vector is a vector whose elements are jointly Gaussian random variables and because these z1, z2 and zn are jointly Gaussian random variables, this vector z is a Gaussian random vector. Okay? So, what I am saying is if you have a random vector whose elements are normal id random variables, you multiply this random vector with a suitable matrix, then you end up with a Gaussian random vector. Okay? So, what is a definition of Gaussian random vector? A Gaussian random vector can be obtained by linear transformation of a random vector whose elements are normal id random variables. Okay? So, this is another way in which you can talk about this. Okay. Okay, so, let us continue with our model and let us explore some cases 
in this equation. So, the first case is when A is a diagonal matrix. Let us see what happens. If A is a diagonal matrix, I have Okay. So, all other elements are 0. So, all other elements except the elements along the diagonal are 0 in a diagonal matrix and also remember that diagonal matrix is a square matrix. Okay. So, in this case n should be same as m. Okay. Okay. So, now if A is a diagonal matrix, what happens is remember that n is same as m. So, how have we obtained this is by simply multiplying this matrix with this column matrix. Okay. Now, this w 1 and w 2 and w m are statistically independent. right? We have always assumed them to be i i d random variables. So, this a 1 1 w 1, a 2 2 w 2, a m m w m are also statistically independent. Are they i d? They are not i d because even though they have a mean of 0, the variance has changed. So, what is the variance of this element? So, the variance would be a 1 1 square. Okay. So, the variance of these random variables have changed because of this multiplication with these real numbers, but they are independent and also they have a mean of 0. Now, we have already said that z 1, z 2 and z n will be jointly Gaussian random variables. Okay. So, this is the definition. If you have a vector w which has its elements as normal i d random variables. If you multiply with a suitable matrix such that this matrix multiplication is defined, then the random vector that you have is a Gaussian random vector. And if it is a Gaussian random vector, its elements are jointly Gaussian random variables. So, what we can say is A11 w1, A22 w2, and A m m w m are also jointly Gaussian random variables. And thus, all statistically all statistically independent Gaussian random variables are jointly Gaussian random variables. Okay. So, this is an important idea. All statistically independent Gaussian random variables are jointly Gaussian random variables. Okay. Now, let us consider case 2. Let us go to case 2. In case 2, let us consider a matrix Y which is obtained by multiplying this random vector z with a matrix C. Okay. And of course, we are multiplying it with the matrix C such that this matrix multiplication is defined. As I have said before, 
this z is of a dimension n by 1. Uh, let us assume c to be of dimension k by n and so y will be of dimension k by 1. Okay. Now, we already know that z is a times random vector w. So, we have y equals to c times a times w. Okay. Now, what is the c a? Let us consider that the c a is nothing but it is some matrix b and so I have y is b times w where b I have assumed is c times a. Okay. So, this a was n times m c is k times n. So, matrix B will be of dimension k times m. Okay, right. So, what equation we have got is if y is c times z, I can also write y as b times w and thus y is also Gaussian random vector. Why is this a Gaussian random vector? Because it has been obtained by multiplying this random vector w, where w has its elements as normal id random variables with a matrix B. Okay? And we have said that any such operation should lead to a Gaussian random vector and its elements will be jointly Gaussian random variables. Okay? So, in fact, what we are saying is if you take a Gaussian random vector, if you have a Gaussian random vector, you multiply a Gaussian random vector with a matrix, then what we get is a Gaussian random vector and this is an important idea. So, linear transformation of a Gaussian random vector gives you another Gaussian random vector. Okay. Let us now see case 3 and it is also going to be an important case. So, we have said y is b times z right, where z is a Gaussian random vector, y is also a Gaussian random vector and let us now assume a special case of a matrix B, where B is a row matrix. So, let me assume B to be a row matrix. Okay. So, what I get is y 1 is B 1 times z 1 plus B 2 times z 2 b n times z n. Okay. And what is y 1? It is a jointly Gaussian random variable, but since we have just one random variable, we can say that y 1 is a Gaussian random variable. Jointly Gaussian random variables are also Gaussian random variables, but they are sometimes more than just being Gaussian random variables. Okay. So, y 1 is a Gaussian random variable and what we are saying is a linear combination of jointly Gaussian random variables gives us a Gaussian random variable. Okay? And this is an important result because sometimes these jointly Gaussian random variables are also defined using this idea. So, this leads to another definition of jointly Gaussian random variables and what is this? Let me first try this equation again. So, if any linear combination, if any linear combination of random variables leads to a Gaussian random variable, then the random variables
are jointly Gaussian random variables. Okay. So, this is another way in which we can define jointly Gaussian random variables. So, if any linear combination of random variables gives us a Gaussian random variable, then the underlying random variables are jointly Gaussian random variables. And remember, this is if and only if condition, right. If any linear combination does not lead to a Gaussian random variable, then the underlying random variables will not be jointly Gaussian random variables. So, I can add one more f to indicate that this is if and only if condition. Okay. So, we have learned the two ways in which we can define jointly Gaussian random variables. The first idea is jointly Gaussian random variables are the random variables which are obtained by different linear combinations of common underlying set of normal ID random variables. And the second interpretation is if any linear combination of random variables is a Gaussian random variable, then the underlying random variables are jointly Gaussian random variables. Okay. So, let us close this topic by asking another question because sometimes uh, there exists a confusion in the head of students and that question is, is any linear combination, is any linear combination of Gaussian random variables a Gaussian random variable. Okay. So, this is a question that we are asking, right. And what is the answer? Answer is no. So, not any linear combination of Gaussian random variables is a Gaussian random variable. Only if the random variables are jointly Gaussian random variables then their linear combination then their linear combination will give us a Gaussian random variable. So, this is important do not get carried away by thinking that any linear combination of Gaussian random variables will be a Gaussian random variable. This is not true. The underlying random variables has to be jointly Gaussian random variables. Okay. If these random variables are statistically independent random variables, if the linear combination that you are forming, uh, you are considering the random variables to be statistically independent Gaussian random variables, then of course, their linear combination would be a Gaussian random variable because statistically independent random variables are nothing but also jointly Gaussian random variables. Okay. So, the underlying uh, random variables has to be jointly Gaussian random variables. Let us see one example where the linear combination of Gaussian random variables is not a Gaussian random variable. Let us see one example. Uh, we will not derive this completely. I will leave it to you to think about this. So, let us consider x as a normal random variable with mean 0 and variance 1 and let us consider y as a random variable which is defined like this. So, it is x if mod of x is greater than 1 and it is minus x if mod of x is less than 1. First, you prove that y is also a normal random variable. Okay. That is first thing you have to think about and you can prove that y is also a normal random variable. You can prove it intuitively as well. You do not have to recourse to rigorous maths. Okay. Then let us consider z another random variable which is nothing but sum of x plus y. Then you should also prove that this z is not, is not a Gaussian random variable. Okay. You will see that z will not be a Gaussian random variable. Okay. So, this gives you this example gives you some idea why uh, 
linear combination of Gaussian random variables is always not a Gaussian random variable. Okay. So, work this out and this will help you in clearing up this doubt. Okay. So, let us now start talking about something else and this is the covariance of a Gaussian random vector. So, we have already defined what is a Gaussian random vector and now let us talk about what is the covariance of this Gaussian random vector. Okay. So, let me revise what was covariance anyway. If I have two random vectors x and y, we define their covariance as So, this we have already seen, right. So, I am not going to repeat this. So, this is how we define the covariance of two random vectors. And if the random vectors that we are assuming are with 0 mean, I have already said that, that this is what we will assume throughout this course until and unless stated. So, we can always assume that these random vectors are with 0 mean. So, this goes to 0 and the covariance of two random vectors with 0 mean is nothing but expected value of x into y transpose. Okay. So, let us see what happens to this covariance if the involved random vector is a Gaussian random vector. So, we define another notation k of z where k of z is covariance of random vector z where z is a Gaussian random vector. So, using the same ideas, we can write that this is nothing but expected value of z into z transpose. And we have said that z is what? It is some matrix times w, where w is a random vector consisting of normal id random variables. So, substituting this value of z in here, we get k of z is expected value of a w times a w transpose. And from here we get this is expected value of a w and this will be w transpose into a transpose. And a and a transpose are deterministic quantities. So, expected operator would not influence them right? and we can pull this expected operator inside this product and what we will end up with is nothing but A times expected value of W into W transpose times A transpose. Okay? Because A and A transpose are deterministic quantities and we have seen in one of the previous lectures that expected value of a constant times a random variable is nothing but constant times expected value of that random variable. Okay? So, this is what we get. Let us now see what is this. So, what is expected value of w into w transpose. Okay. So, as I have already pointed out several times that when we are considering random vectors, they are assumed to be column vectors. So, w is a column vector which is like this and w transpose will be this. And of course, we have to take the expected value of the product of these two random vectors. Okay. So, multiplying term by term, what we get is expected value of w into w transpose is nothing but expected value of w 1 square w 1 times w 2 w 1 times w m, we get w 2 times w 1 and rest could be filled easily. Okay. 
Okay. Now, so when we want to take the expected value of a matrix, what we can do is we can take the expected value term wise, right. So, this is also what we have seen. So, let us now see quickly what would be the expected value of such cross terms. What is the expected value of W1 times W2? Because these random variables are statistically independent, this would be nothing but expected value of W1 times expected value of W2 and because they are with 0 mean, this would be 0. So, once you take expected value of these terms, you will get a flat 0. And so, what we get is expected value of w into w transpose. Let me simplify this bit more. What is this expected value of these terms, square terms? So, expected value of w 1 is square. This is nothing but it is the variance of this random variable w 1 because it is with 0 mean and the variance of a normal random variable is 1. Right? We have assumed these w 1, w 2 and w m to be normal random variables. And so, what we get is expected value of w into w transpose is a identity matrix. Okay? Okay. So, this is identity matrix I m where it has a dimension of m by m. Okay, so, there is no randomness in this term. right? So, once you are taking the expected value of this quantity, you get an identity matrix. There is no randomness involved here. So, finally, what we were trying to find out is the covariance of the Gaussian random vector. We said that this would be A times this quantity and this is nothing but identity matrix and a matrix times an identity matrix is nothing but the matrix itself. So, the covariance of a Gaussian random vector is simply A times A transpose, where A is the matrix with which you are multiplying the vector with normal ID random variables to get a Gaussian random vector. Okay. So, it is simple, the covariance of a Gaussian random vector turns out to be quite simple. So, just one reminder, one point more, we are saying W is consisting of m normal ID random variables and because these are uh, normal and ID, remember that W is also a Gaussian random vector, is not it? So, it is a special kind of Gaussian random vector where the random variables are independent right as well. Okay, so, we have learned a lot about Gaussian random vectors and what are these jointly Gaussian random variables. We have also seen how to find the covariance of a Gaussian random vector and it is the time now to talk about Gaussian process. So, let us define the big concept for today and this concept is about Gaussian processes. So, to talk about these Gaussian processes, let us first recap what we have learned about random processes. So, we said in the context of random processes that random process is built using several sample functions. And to think about these random processes, what we can do is we can take the samples of these random processes. Let us say I take the sample of this random process at time instant t 1, t 2 and up to t n and when I take the sample of this random process, what I end up with is set of random variables. Okay. So, we get this set which is consisting of n random variables x t 1, x t 2 and x t n and what is then this Gaussian process? A Gaussian process is a random process whose random variables are jointly Gaussian random variables. Okay? 
So, this is a big idea. If the samples of a random process are jointly Gaussian random variables, then the process is a Gaussian process. Okay. So, thinking about Gaussian process is easy once we know what are these jointly Gaussian random variables. right? So, all samples of the random process should give us jointly Gaussian random variables and then the underlying random process is referred to as Gaussian process and this Gaussian process is of lot of interest to us in communication system because noise as we will see is also nothing but a Gaussian process. Okay. So, what is of interest also to us is to model the probability density function. So, what we are interested in is finding out this probability density function or rather the joint probability density function of this random vector z, where z is a Gaussian random vector. Why we want to understand about probability density function of a random vector z? Because this random process, a Gaussian process can be understood by taking the samples right? and the samples will give us a bunch of jointly Gaussian random variables. And if I collect this bunch of jointly Gaussian random variables, I have a Gaussian random vector. Okay? So, instead of talking about a Gaussian process at all time instances, I will like to talk about this random process only at countable time instances. And once I want to specify a process in terms of countable time instances, I can also talk about this process in terms of a random vector. Okay? And uh, once I sample this Gaussian process at countable time instances, what I end up with is a Gaussian random vector. Okay? So, that is why we want to think about a Gaussian random vector and that is why now we are also trying to think about what will be the probability density function of this Gaussian random vector z. Okay. So, where to start from? So, we can start from a good old relationship that this Gaussian random vector is nothing but a matrix multiplied with a Gaussian random vector w, where w is special Gaussian random vector, where its elements are also independent of each other. Okay. So, this is the objective trying to find out the joint probability density function of this random vector z and we already know the uh, way in which we want to talk about this probability density functions. Okay. So, this denotes the probability density function of random vector z, where random vector takes in numerical value z. Okay. Okay. So, to think about this, let us first calculate what is the probability density function of this random vector w. Okay to evaluate this is easier. We will start thinking about what is the probability density function of this random vector w. Okay, so, let us try to think about this and what is the spatial in w that is elements are independent. If the elements are independent, then the joint probability density function is nothing but it is the product of marginal probability density functions. So, let us assume that the elements of w as we have been assuming so far are nothing but w1, w2 and wm. So, the joint probability density function for this random vector w is nothing but it is the product of marginal PDFs. Okay, up to w m. Okay. Now, what is this probability density function of a random variable w 1? It is in fact a normal random variable and if it is a normal random variable, we already know it is probability density function. What is this? It is nothing but this. 
right. So, now I can find the joint probability density function by substituting the marginal probability density functions of w 1, w 2 and so on and so forth. So, what I will wind up with is and so on and so forth. So, I can write this in one go as ok. So, this will be raised to power m because there are m such terms. And I know what is this quantity. So, what is this quantity? This is nothing but norm square of a vector. So, norm of the norm square of a vector is nothing but we have already seen this is nothing but it is the sum of a square of the components of this vector. So, norm square of a vector is nothing but this quantity where w 1, w 2 and w m are the elements of this random vector w okay, or any vector w. So, what I get is a simple expression like this. So, this is one important expression that we will use. Let me call this as equation number 1 and then I need to have another expression to find out the probability density function of z in terms of probability density function of w. Okay. So, our initial objective is to find out this pdf. We have already find out the joint pdf for w and now I will use or explore this expression to express the probability density function of z in terms of probability density function of w. So, let us see. Okay. So, to think about this let us invoke geometry and let us assume that I have two random variables w 1 and w 2 and let us also assume that I have another two random variables z 1 and z 2 and let us assume that these random variables z 1 and z 2 are obtained by linear combinations of these w 1 and w 2. So, for example, let us assume z 1 is a 1 times w 1 plus a 2 times w 2 and let us assume that this random variable z 2 is a 3 times w 1 plus a 4 times w 2. And let us now consider an element of length delta along this random variable w 1. And let us see how this element of length delta is transformed into this z space. So, if we want to look at this, what we are assuming is w 1 has an element of length delta. So, this will be a 1 times delta plus. So, there is no length along w 2. So, this would be a 2 times 0. So, z 1 will thus become a 1 times delta. So, we can draw this here z 1 would be a 1 times delta. Similarly, z 2 will become a 3 times delta. Okay. 
overall what we will have is that this element of length delta will transform to this element and the coordinates of this point let us assume that this point is A and the coordinates of this point would be A 1 delta and A 3 delta. Similarly, if I consider an element of length delta along W 2, this element would transform into this space let us assume into this element. And if you look carefully by having the similar logic, this point will be A 2 delta and A 4 delta. Now, from these elements, let us now look into what happens if I consider area. For example, if I consider a square of area delta square, this square will map to a parallelogram. of some different area. Okay. So, this is what happens when you linearly transform random variables. So, remember what we are doing here is we are having a random vector z which is a times random vector w. And in this case, for example, this random vector w contains two random variables w1 and w2. This random vector z contains two random variables z1 and z2. And A is a matrix whose elements are A1, A2, A3 and A4. So, I can now extend this concept from two dimension to three dimension. And in three dimension, let us assume that I have three random variables w1, w2 and w3 and similarly for z space also I will have three random variables z1, z2 and z3 and in two dimension we had a square, in three dimension we will have a cube so let us consider that we have a cube here the volume of this cube will be delta cube and similarly in three dimension this cube will map to a parallel piped in z space so, in Z space we will have a parallel pipe let us consider that we have a parallel pipe here and this parallel pipe will have a volume of delta cube times mod of determinant of A. And why is this so? This you must have seen in the basics of vectors. The most fundamental way in which you can think about determinant is that determinant is nothing, but it is the volume scaling factor of the linear transformation described by the matrix A. So, if I have such a linear transformation, the linear transformation is carried out with this matrix A. If I want to find out how much the volume scales from W space to Z space, the volume in Z space can be simply obtained by multiplying the volume in W space by mod of determinant of A. So, this denotes the volume scaling factor of the linear transformation. 
So, this is one idea that we will use. The second idea is because each point in this space is getting mapped to a point in this space, the probability with which a point lies in this red cube will be same as the probability with which a point will lie in this blue parallelopiped. This probability will be same. So, let me write down this. So, probability of finding a point in red cube is same as probability of finding a point in blue parallel piped. Okay. Now, what is this probability? We have already seen that this probability can be thought in terms of probability density functions, where if I just consider one random variable, then this probability density function of one random variable is nothing but it is the probability per unit length. If I have two random variables involved, then the probability density function is nothing but probability per unit area. If I have three random variables, then the probability density function is nothing but it is the probability per unit volume. And hence, I can think about the probability in three dimension or in n dimension, where n is more than 3, by just multiplying the probability density function with the volume. So, probability of finding a point in red cube is nothing but probability density function times volume. And let us say the volume is delta to the power n where I am interested in n dimensional space. So, this is volume and this is probability density function and this will give me probability of finding a point in a red cube and this thing should be same as the volume of a blue parallel piped times the probability density function in z space. Okay. So, again this is volume and this is the probability density function. So, then from this simply what we can obtain is the probability density function in a z space is nothing but the probability density function in w space divided by mod of determinant of a. So, once I know the probability density function of random vector w, I can easily find the probability density function of a random vector z by using this expression. So, these are the two important results. What are those? First, we have seen that probability density function of a random vector w is this. And then we have seen that probability density function of a random vector z is nothing but this. And using these two expressions in the next lecture, we will derive the probability density function of random vector z. Okay? So, this is what we will uh, carry out in the next lecture. So, we conclude for today. In today's lecture, we have developed some important ideas and the ideas were we have understood what are these jointly Gaussian random variables, we have understood what is this Gaussian random vector, we have understood what is this Gaussian process, 
we have understood what is the covariance of a Gaussian random vector and we have understood the relationship between the probability density function of random vector z and random vector w if z is a times random vector w. Thank you.